welcome back to Pink's 47. So we're going to go back in time a little bit and we're going to have a look how all this was achieved. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is use some basing glue and a brush. I'm going to brush glue around these rock formations that I've attempted to make. I'm going to use some 2 mil muddy and then I'm going to hoover it up and hopefully it's going to leave some of the rock exposed and then I need to weather them down with some browns and stuff to pick them up a little bit more but that's what I'm going to start doing first is just trying to get some basic 2 mil grass in between a little bit like the picture that's coming up now that's what's given me the inspiration quite pleased with how that's coming out that's sort of how I pictured with this random rock formation I've just used some of this these tufts this foliage stuff this woodland scenic foliage I'm just disguising some of the little holes in the mud rock and also I feel like it would lie naturally here obviously I'm disguising the edge here with some more foliage I just want to put a darker longer grass along here there's no way that you get this lush sort of coloured grass right next to the track work so all this flat area i'm going to now put some dead grass in and then it may have some sort of other debris maybe some railway sleepers and bits and bobs just to break it up a little bit but this two mil, two mil muddy is gave me the colour that i was looking for i don't usually do an equal blanket of the same colour but for this particular area that is sort of what i wanted to go with and I'm quite pleased with that so far. So I'm going to use the layering spray. And I'm just going to put a strip along here. And then I've got some 6mm dead in the detailer. And I'm going to see what this gives me. So I thought I'd better weather down the track before I get carried away with any more scenery in this area. I do want to put some tufts in between the lines here, especially underneath here where they break up a little bit. So I'm using the, the rail match sleeper grime, I'm using the acrylic version, uh, not the acrylic version, sorry, I'm using the enamel version. I'm thinning it down one to one. So I'm doubling what you get. So I've got an old bottle here, so I can put half a paint in and then top it up with thinners. That seems to be about right for me. I haven't got a lot of trigger on my airbrush. You can see there it's screwed quite far in, so I've got a little bit more control. And I don't want to get, I don't want to be too grubby with this like some of the rest of the layout. I quite like this lime coloured ballast. So I'm just going to try and colour just around the edges, on the edges of the rails and just a little bit over the sleepers.
right not too bad for a first pass again that's two mil muddy on there so i think i'm going to need some slightly longer grass on top of the rock work just to cover that sharp finish and then maybe some foliage and bits and bobs down here dead grass again next to the track level obviously i've got to finish off this corner yet but as always i am making it up as i go along i do want to put a dry stone wall in somewhere perhaps not here perhaps a dry stone wall will be along this edge and i'll have to sort of fizzle out into something here maybe we'll put some trees here to break up from the dry stone wall and then to the limestone cliff face so we'll let that dry off dry as well but, and then maybe get some concrete dust out and just try and get this a little bit browner it looks really white on the lens it doesn't look that white in person it's a bit grayer but for you guys when i'm looking at it through the camera now it's very white i want to just try and put some browns in it and bits and bobs so i'm going to let that dry first i've sprayed over these bits here with the layering spray they just naturally landed there and i figured well where they've naturally landed would naturally be where it's grown so i've actually left them there which wasn't intentional but i think that's coming on So as you can see I've already made a start on this side disguising the joins where the bridge meets the landscape and I've just used a wooden scenic uh, clump material for that this is the olive one that they do but how I've got it to stick to the sides is I've used this floor tack sort of stuff you use for edges of carpets and tiles and as you can see all this other stuff it says on here this clump will stick to this even on vertical walls spray this on leave it a couple of seconds work your way from the bottom up and it just works really well so i'm going to carry on doing that on that side now see look there's no problem with that that's not going anywhere so I've added a bit more raw plaster on the left hand side as you can see it doesn't look like much at the minute but this is how this side started with just lumps so i'm going to try and replicate that a little bit and i feel like that scene is coming together i, I have got some original not original some real stuff here so i'm just going to pour some of this down on this edge <laughs> add some sleepers and some bits and bobs over here probably a couple of piles of ballast as well just to break up this greenery 
I've been looking in my um, trusted book just to get some ideas. We've actually got these stacks of sleepers and stuff here. And here you can actually see there's some sort of derelict stone building. I don't think I'm going to put one there as I've already got two on the leg out. But I'm just using this as my references just to see what is on the side of the line. And if you're interested what the book is, it's Over the Peak Part 2, Peak Dale to Miller's Dale. So this has got everything in it I need to model my layout. And I certainly need to start looking at doing my dry stone walls, which will be in the next episode. So like this one here, I like to replicate a little bit of that along here. So I suspect that might be in the next video. Also doing some work on the two signal boxes I've got on the layout. This one will be Whittington Dale, so we'll have a little closer look at that. I was actually gifted this by a good friend, Natalie Porter, so it was delivered to me already built. So thanks very much, much Nat, if you're listening to this. So I'm going to put my own sort of style on it, so I'm going to give it give it a bit of a weathering. I'm going to need to get the Whittington Dale sign on there somehow. It's probably going to have to come across this area here, across this upright bit of weather in yeah and then we can think about getting that into place then put some streaks on the roof may even put a bit more detail inside perhaps a driver on top of the step so that's what we've got coming up in the next few videos i'll work on some of this scenery off camera i don't want to um repeat what i've already done you've seen me do this once so next time I'm back this should all be in green and we'll work on the dry stone walls.